Participants, this is Honorable Senator Vin Gopal. He's a state senator for New Jersey from the 11th Legislative District, and he serves as the Senator Majority Conference Leader and Vice Chair of the Senate Higher Education Committee. Uh, senator, thank you for joining us today. We're honored to have you. Thank you guys so much. I hope you've had a, a good and productive day and to the organizers, uh, everyone at uh, Influencer and and uh, everyone who's who's worked today, not just the participants, but the, the organizers today. Thank you. Um, as chair of the New Jersey Senate Education Committee, we had a, a hearing a, a few weeks ago on mental health in our K-12 school systems. Unfortunately, now mental health is a, at an all-time high um, with depression and anxiety, um, substance abuse for those who are older. Uh, so we are doing a lot in New Jersey right now to tackle a lot of that, including uh, increasing the number of social workers, therapists, and guidance counselors throughout our 600 plus school districts. Um, as a really, uh, as we see an increase, even a child during COVID who might've missed a prom or graduation or something their sibling may have had that they may have not had, we see a, a big increase in, in, in mental health. So uh, as, as a, a state senator and also uh, coming from a um, you know first generation my parents are from from southern India uh, and I used to I used to go back every year um, uh, to Kerala where my grandparents lived until they passed a few years ago um, and they would always teach me uh, the important values of taking care of your mental health and your well-being um, and it's something that I know that you guys are all going through today and um, and each and every day. And I know that was a big part of today. So it's great to, to say hello to everyone. Congratulations to the, the winners today. And, and I know you had a, a contest and uh, a lot of else through the Academy today. So uh, honored to spend a couple of minutes with you. If anyone ever needs anything, you can always follow me on Twitter at, at Vingo Pal. Um, and uh, good, to, good to say hello for a few minutes. Thank you very much for joining us. Your words were very much appreciated. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us. And especially, you know, uh, it is going to be a great encouragement for each and every student who is participating today. The uh, public speaking contests are still going on. We are going around the final round. We would love to have you here and listen to the wonderful speeches today. Yeah, I look forward to it. I'll be hearing them. So thank you again. <laughs> We will now be moving on to the middle school finalists for public speaking and announcing those winners right now. This is just a reminder to uh, the participants who are coming out of the middle school breakout room that they will be receiving a participation certificate and winners will be receiving a winner certificate after the event. Um, all right, the middle school finalists for public speaking are Stephen Tunison, Surya Gadapudi, Gayatri Gamini, Parshini Asokumar, and Joel Sayagaya Siva. Uh, we will be starting speeches immediately. You'll be presenting the same exact speech you presented in the breakout room to a larger panel of judges. There will be no Q&A session in the main room. The topic for middle school public speaking was online learning and whether that has phased out traditional learning. Uh, Stephen, you're our first speaker. Ever since the COVID-19 pandemic, we've noticed a huge debate among everyone involved in education, whether which method of teaching is superior, this being in person or virtual. Of course, when we started the pandemic, everyone wasn't really thinking of virtual as a long-term option. We all just thought it was going to be a couple of week thing until COVID runs down. However, that didn't happen. Eventually, the pandemic did become a full pandemic and caused for America to go lockdown, causing for almost every child across the country to bunker down into their house and go on a computer to learn. Now, the debate rises of whether education should be taught in the future among a system of computers or a system of in-person learning, which has been the traditional method for over hundreds of years. 
To really understand the method of this debate, it's important to identify all parties involved. First, we have the students, and this category also includes me. From personal preference alone, I can guarantee that every time I have the option, I would choose in person. This is because I get a better relationship with not just my peers, but also the teachers. And people are more likely to learn something if it's coming from a source that they find more trusted or more likable. This is why teachers have such a long lasting impact if they know how to make class fun. And it's significantly harder to do this in a virtual setting. Parents are also for the same reason. However, they also have another reason. This reason is that many of them can't afford to have one parental figure, at least over 18, at home every watching over all the children in the household being virtual. Many working class families have to have both parents or as many over 18 year olds that are in the house working to just meet months rent and live paycheck to paycheck. Speaking of this, some people can't even afford a full on computer, meaning that it's a lot harder for them to have access to the internet. So this is why it's crucial for in-person learning. Looking on the other side of the debate, we have teachers. Knowing my own personal teachers from my own school, I know that it's a pretty split issue if we should have it among teachers, at least, if it should be in-person or virtual. First of all, it's almost 50-50. And the teachers that are pro in-person are for the similar reasons that the parents and students that I mentioned previously. For the teachers that oppose, though, have their own reason. This is because it's a massive health risk for them to go in school and possibly get COVID, considering that many teachers are also maybe considered elderly and more vulnerable. However, this can be partially ignored, though, because many teachers would have access to the vaccines if they would be considered essential workers. And if they already are, then it's possible for them to apply for the vaccine as soon as they can get it, meaning that they'd have the earliest access whenever a new booster or any new vaccine would come out to help protect against COVID. So while this argument shouldn't be completely ignored, I feel like it is definitely undermined by the vaccines since they do immediately and initially always lower the death rate. However, all of what I'm saying right now is just really talk. It's not really any statistics. It's just to what other people have been saying and I've been using it as a, and I've been using myself as a way to express all these opinions and organize them. So the really true way to look to see the impact that it has is looking at standardized testing in public school. Public school because it's where the majority of students are. And specifically, I chose the state of Pennsylvania. The reason why is because not only is it just my home state, but it is also a very diverse state having a large population and also having urban and rural centers and of course suburban centers too, meaning that a lot of Pennsylvania reflects on the ratio of farmer to suburban family to city worker in Pennsylvania is close and similar to America. So it makes Pennsylvania a very good testing site for this experiment. And the data I found was frankly shocking. There was very little difference between the 2021 results, which COVID impacted school heavily and caused for many schools to still be virtual. And of course, 2019, when COVID was not even a thought. Majority, well, everyone back then didn't know what COVID was until the outbreak in 2020, March. And I was going to apply the 2020 data. However, the PSSA were not distributed during that time. So that information was not available. But comparing the data though, they were very close. And some categories were even by the percentage. So it's very hard to say for certain that one is better than the other, and virtual is worse or virtual is better. Now, while I would much rather prefer to say that this was actually false, there's no way that I can say that. And no matter my opinion or anyone else's opinion for that matter, it simply just does not outrule the truth of the matter. And this being that there's actually very little impact on the school's purpose, which is to produce good test grades on the actual result and the specifics that I gave. No matter how much I want on or anyone else wants, my opinion does not outweigh the truth. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, our next speaker will be Surya Gedapudi.
due to the COVID-19 pandemic, life has changed significantly. One major thing that has, a, that has affected student life specifically is the school itself. Because of the pandemic, everyone in the world had to quarantine. They were locked in their homes. So how did students learn? How did school itself function? To resolve this, online school was made. It was a great alternative, but will it exceed regular in-person learning? Personally, I think in-person is much better than online. Online school, at least for me, was light work. Barely anyone kept their cameras on, including me. You could just be doing random things and the teacher won't really know. For example, in school, you're absolutely not supposed to eat food, food during class. Assuming you're not allowed to eat in online class, you can just eat while you're learning and no one would really know. And you, you, no one would really know. So there's a lot more freedom. Online school created a lot of freedom. Although freedom is extremely important to have, limitations must be set. I'm guilty of doing things in online school that you would never be able to do in for in-person middle schools. At times, instead of paying attention in class, I'll just sit on my phone and watch videos or random things on the internet. Also, the school day was just about four and a half hours long, which is a half day every day. So while the school timings were reduced and me sitting on my phone, learning was not so effective. Online school is just too distracting when you have so much freedom. So many kids do not pay attention in class and just do other things. And this affected them badly. Some people I knew failed online school somehow, and they had to be in a special class that's sort of outcasted from the rest of the student communities for this current in-person school year. Back then, I thought online school was amazing since I could do whatever I wanted and the school day was so short. And when, it, and when in-person was gonna begin soon, I dreaded it. However, in-person became extremely fun. I was able to be with my friends, make new friends, and create memories that I can reminisce about in the future. Imagine being a senior in high school when COVID began. You would not be able to fully learn your final lessons in school, and, and you would miss out on important events to spend with your family and friends. And then off you go to college by yourself. One of your last chances to have fun in, school, in the school year was ruined. In conclusion, with in-person school, not only will it be much more effective since you're actually able to pay attention due to limit, limitations on the environment, but you're able to make more memories that would otherwise not happen in online school. Thank you. Thank you very much, Surya. Uh, our next speaker will be Gayatri Gamini. Computers this, computers that. We as humans have gone to rely, to love and rely on devices so much so that we need them to live a majority of our lives. This isn't good. We can't keep depending on small electronic gadgets to live our lives. And especially since the COVID pandemic started, there has been a humongous increase in the usage of devices. People worldwide have been using phones 70% more, computers 40% more, and iPads 22% more. Those numbers are so high, and that's not good for our eyesight, for our mental health, and just for us in general. And sure, even I agree, it's easy doing things from the comfort of your own bedroom. You can do it in PJs, and you could just live a comfortable lifestyle. You can cut corners in some areas of your life, but education is not one such area where you should take the risk as to cut a corner and take the easy way. Online schooling is not the best option when it comes to your education, as your education is the foundation for the rest of your life. In online schooling, there are so many distractions. Your, your neighbors mowing their lawn, your mom's making breakfast, you have your brother like I do. Believe me, I know the struggle. You have your younger brother just complaining in another room and you can hear him whining in the middle of your timed essay that you're stressing about because it's due in 10 minutes. You have all of these distractions that reduce the level of concentration, which thus, Make, your, make you turn in less quality work and reduce your grade. 
that's not really a good thing if you're trying to get those A pluses and compete with all those other really smart people at school. But in in-person learning, your mom isn't going to be making breakfast next door in, that, in the next room. You can't hear your brother whine. And you're definitely not going to hear your neighbor mowing his lawn. Also, in in-person learning, teachers are able to give students more attention and make sure that they understand the material, as that, whereas that's not possible on Zoom, where there's constant lagging, people are having so many troubles, and plenty of students. Believe me, I face this all year. Fake issues, audio issues, their camera's not working, they can't present. It was so annoying de dealing with all of that. Also, from my personal experience, as last year in seventh grade, I had to deal with Zoom for eight hours every single day. It's definitely not worth it because I haven't been able to retain a lot of information that I learned and just forgot last year, except for math. I mean, that's always an exception. But this year, I can say that I even remember what was on my chemistry safety test that was all the way in September. So online learning definitely isn't the way to go when it comes to your education, as learning is really important and you should take it seriously. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gayatri. Uh, our next speaker will be Harshini Asokumar. One and a half years ago, if someone were to approach you and ask you the question, is online learning the future? You would diminish it, eradicate it, not even care about about, maybe even call it crazy. But after one and a half years of virtual learning, after the pandemic that we all love and hate COVID-19 struck us, our ideology of normal has changed completely. Now, it doesn't seem that crazy anymore. Many say our days with in-person learning are numbered, that it is only a matter of time before we change to virtual learning completely, because that's the better option. But I'm here to argue otherwise. For starters, the number one location for all online classes is the room I'm talking to you right now, my bedroom. But that is also happens to be the king and queen of all distractions. There are millions of other things you could be doing and the teachers, your peers would not even know about it because all it would take is a click, a button that would take away your camera and take away from your learning as well. But when you are in an in-person setting, the resources around you are there to help you learn. Your peers, your educators, they'll want what's best for your academic wellness. Additionally, there's the case of developing stronger relationships with peers. There is a reason that school is meant to be done in a group setting and not at home, not alone. Because you teachers are not the only people that you can learn from. You go to school every day knowing there is a chance that you can learn, grow, do something new. And that not only comes from your educators, but also your peers. Working in group projects allows for that collaboration to be there. But in an online setting, when going into breakout rooms that only have people's cameras off, no interaction whatsoever, that social interaction is no longer there. That brings me to my next point, more hands-on projects. During my virtual learning, especially during science class, we watched a lot of simulations, videos, reruns of things that we could be doing in person. And yes, at the moment, due to the pandemic, that was the only option. But going back now would take away the chance to get in there, get our hands dirty, learn how to do things physically, because that is the kind of thing that sticks. And finally, there's the act of cheating. We cannot entirely blame the students for feeling motivated to cheat in that setting because of the ideology that has placed upon us that it is only the letter grade that matters. Society has determined that whether you have an A, B, D, or C, that is what matters. That is what determines your society, your work, but that is not what truly matters. It is the learning benefit that we get from studying, and that is what was taken away from us in an online learning setting because it didn't matter if we cheated because all that mattered was that simple letter grade. But when we are put in an in-person setting, we're almost forced, per se, to actually learn, to actually pay attention because you could easily be taken away. That is the kind of things that will help us in the future. We are able to practice things like public speaking when we are in a virtual setting because most of the time our cameras are off. And that brings me to my final point, technical difficulties. Yes, most of the time they are true and sometimes they're fake, but either way, they take away from our time. Helping students resolve their technical issues 
takes away from the entirety of the class period. And things like Zoom bombers can make that situation even worse. All in all, it is time to shut our computers and talk face to face. Thank you. Thank you very much, Harshini. And our final speaker for middle school, last but not least, Joel Saya Gayasio. COVID-19 is a virus that started in 2020 and it has changed our world drastically. And in one way, online learning. But wait, people take that as a good thing. Why? Well, for one thing I know, and especially I caught, caught in this reason, waking up late. People love to sleep. That's what human beings do one, spend one third of our lives for, sleeping. And people don't like them waking up late. So they take the advantage of online learning, wake up late and, and still stay in their bed and go on to their Chromebook. Another good thing is that if they get hungry in the middle of class, they can easily turn off the Chromebook, go to the kitchen, grab a snack, and the teachers won't even know it. Sure, virtual learning is good in a way, but is it more effective? No. Why? Well, for one thing I know, internet. Let's just say you're in a Zoom and you suddenly get kicked out for an internet problem. This is one of many reasons why Zoom is really bad. You could lose what the teacher is saying and have trouble on a project, which will make your grades change drastically. Another bad thing about Zoom meetings are Zoom bombers. And when I mean Zoom bombers, I mean random people who are not even in the school or district going into the Zoom and just bombing us. And when I mean bombing, I mean playing inappropriate mu music, showing inappropriate singles, and then leaving and they would never get too caught. This is also, this takes away our learning experience and it, it, changes, uh, it changes us in a very negative way. Another bad thing about virtual, re uh, virtual learning is your health. Now, I had a lot of problems during virtual learning, headaches, eyesight, and so much more. And I usually have to try and get off of Zoom to just to take a little nap. And it's rarely we have to get, the, we get those breaks. So when I take it, I make sure I spend every minute of it. Now, not only, and not only that, I had an extra class after school, which put more hours into my eyesight. But gratefully, I didn't get glasses. But every single one of my friends got glasses. Not one, not two, but all of my friends got glasses. And I am grateful that I don't have to get these glasses because, the gla because it, wearing glasses causes you to do uh, causes you to do less things than normal kids do. For example, anything too physical would will, will cause maybe sometimes your glasses to break or and which will cause money problems. Another bad thing about virtual learning it, are the grades. My grades were excellent during in-person school. I was almost a, I was straight A student and I would always get high on it. But when virtual started my uh, my education got low and I got B's, C's, and even D's. And it was really hard to bring those back up. So I am, uh, so I am thankful that now we have in-person so that I can have a better life and a better future. Another, you, sure, maybe virtual reality has a lot of benefits like sleeping later, eating snacks, and um, playing video games during class, but that takes away your time in education. Another bad thing about uh, virtual learning is that you have lots of distractions. Your surroundings, your mom's cleaning up upstairs with the vacuum. You're outside, you hear a garbage truck taking out the trash. Uh, you, you hear your brother whining, which is also a problem for me. When I did virtual learning, I was in front of the room with my Chromebook 
and behind me was my brother. My brother Zoom my brother's teacher would be uh, telling a lesson and it would be kind of distracting for me. So then, which is why I like in person better because it, you don't get distracted because it's very limited inside in, in person. All in all, I think in person is better. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Joel.